actually the phenomena that I'm really interested in can best be understood with neuroscience. And I think what I was trying to really tackle with my book is that even understanding quite complex social phenomena, something like mental health or well-being, which we think of as, you know, experiential, subjective, social, can actually also be understood and maybe should also be understood at through the lens of neuroscience. Because even things that seem existential and intangible can actually be solidified through the lens of science. And that's what excited me anyway. That's what I think. That's why I wrote a book about it. That's why I studied it, etc. So I started my book about speaking about pleasure because I think that's an obvious connection. Many people who think about their own well-being think about pleasure. But I started my book starting about talking about pain because I think that's a less obvious connection. For example, so the reason I started my book talking about pain um, is because I think it might be a little bit surprising to people that not only are you more likely to experience depression if you suffer from chronic pain, but in fact, you're also more likely to acquire chronic pain following an injury if you've experienced depression. So I thought this was quite a sort of surprising link that I wanted to draw out. And the reason for that is because I think this link between physical health and mental health gets overlooked. They get sort of classed in these binary categories. And you hear about sort of like mental health parody and maybe we all need to talk about our mental health. It's sort of in this separate camp, but actually the two cannot be decoupled. And we know that even at the level of the brain, something experienced physically like chronic pain has more in common with mental health problems like depression than it does with acute pain, which we call nociception, sort of immediate pain. Yeah, I love stress-induced analgesia, not just for the book, also personally. Um, Stress-induced analgesia is the phenomenon that if you are under certain kinds of physical stress, and I say you, but I also mean like rats and other mammals if you're under certain kinds there's of so many rats stress. in the book <laughs> and I really don't like rats I hope but... there's not too many rats in this room um but if you're under certain kinds of physical stress your body will release opioids pleasure enhancing chemicals that also have the ability to suppress pain so we know that happens in rats because we can do careful experiments where you put rats in cold water baths and show that then they experience less pain after those cold water baths than they would normally. But we also know that in humans, because we can do much weirder things like throw people out of planes. Okay. They volunteered (laughs) skydivers. You don't just do that with experimental people. I personally have never done this experiment because I don't want to write the ethics application. (laughs) Someone did this experiment where they encouraged volunteers who enjoyed skydiving to jump out of planes and before and after they tested their pain responses and they showed like, just like the rats, that skydiving causes stress-induced analgesia, pain suppression as a result of doing something a bit stressful. There's a limit. It can't be too stressful. It has to be a sweet spot of stress, but it releases opioids in our brain and prevents us experiencing pain temporarily. 